Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we'll be looking at an image classification data set of different fruits, uh, 131 different fruits and vegetables, and trying to classify uh, those fruits and vegetables uh, using transfer learning. So here's a list of all the different fruits, and uh, you can see the total number of images is 90,000. So the, each image is 100, 100 by 100 pixels. And uh, I'm not going to be doing this in the Kaggle notebook, as I usually do, because I actually ran into some memory issues while training the, the um, model, since there's quite a few images. So I'm using Google Colab today. And you can see I've already gone through the trouble of uh, extracting the zip file and getting all the, the directories into the system so that now we can just work with them. All right, so let's get started. Um, I've already imported NumPy and Matplotlib. Uh, and also TensorFlow. The rest is just to get this stuff in. Um, you can see up here and in the training folder we have uh, all of our classes, 131 classes, and in each one is the examples for that class. So if I just drag this over you can see the names of each class and if let's say I wanted to um, let's say I wanted to check okay how many uh, total images do we have? So we can get an image count by, um, well, okay, so train directory is the path to our training folder, and test directory is the path to our testing folder. And, um, you know, actually today I'm not going to be using the test directory because, um, I mean, I could, I could. You could do it, but I'm probably just going to leave it on, on the validation data to analyze how our model is doing. Uh, but anyway, we can use the train directory since this is a path object, not just a string, we can use the dot glob which will um, give us a list of all the um, files that have that match this particular pattern that we'll specify. So we're going to say anything with a slash with end, followed by anything, followed by .jpg. So this will give us all the images. And um, we'll just turn that into a list. And then we will get the length of that list. Okay. Oh yeah, let's just take a look at it. Image count. So we have 67,000 692 examples, and I believe that's the correct number for the training size. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at what that looks like. What what like um, a few of our examples might look like. So uh, we'll say visualization here. I'll just close this out for now. Actually, we'll use it one last time. And let's um let's get all the apples. Uh, uh, the red delicious apples. Let's do that. So we'll call it fruits. And we're going to use the glob function again. But this time we're not going to specify anything. We're going to specify red delicious. Then anything inside that dot jpeg. And so this will give us all the image files uh, in the red delicious folder. Oh, it's actually apple red delicious the Apple Red Delicious folder, all of these. And what we'll do is turn it into a list again. And we will plot them in nine subplots, just to get an uh, a sense of what we're dealing with here. So uh, we'll say the fig size, we'll make it 10 by 10. And then uh, for I in range nine, so nine different subplots, we will uh, create a new subplot in a 3x3 three three grid and we have to index starting from 1 instead of 0 because uh, PyPlot requires that. Then we'll say this image is going to be um, we'll use pill to open the image the ith fruit. So it'll just take the first nine fruits and index uh, the fruits uh, at 
the ith value. Um, <clears throat> remember, fruits here is our list of files. And we actually have to turn that into a string in order to access it with pill. <clears throat> so now if we use the image show function from pyplot, we show the image. We're just going to turn the axis off as well. I'll just use single quotes to keep consistent. Um, then we should get something like Oh no! What happened? Oh, pill dot image dot open. Sorry. There we go. So these are the apples. Uh, these are it's nine examples of red delicious apples. <clears throat> Let's say we wanted to change this to avocados. So avocado. See nine examples of avocados. You can see a lot of the images have been uh, have had uh, transformations applied to them. It looks like. One last example. Let's say what? What do we want here? Uh, we could say Nana. Here we go. Okay. So um, now let's just set up a few variables that will help us. First, the batch size. We're gonna give it a batch size of 32. Pretty standard. We'll say the image height, which you already know, is 100, and the image width. It's also 100. That's what I said back here, right? 100 by 100. So um, we actually don't have to reshape any of the images since they're already in a nice form for us. So let's run that. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to take these images and put them into a TensorFlow dataset. So we'll call it train dataset, train ds, tf.caris.preprocessing. Right there. Dot image from data set, image data set from directory. So this is a nifty function that just takes all these images and puts them right into a data set using the folder names as the class names. So now we'll specify the, uh, sorry, the directory, trainer, which we have up here, the path file. <coughs> and how do we get rid of this? Is there any way? It's annoying. Validation split 20%. Uh, and the subset will be training. So uh, the way it works is you specify the val validation split, and then you say which uh, subset you'll be taking from. And basically, if subset is training, it'll take the 80% that is not uh, validation data. And if you say subset validation, it'll take the 20% that is. And we want to make sure that we always using the same validation data by specifying a random seed, at least 42. This is so annoying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the image size here is going to be image height by image width. Alright, and finally, our batch size will just be the batch size we specified earlier, which is 32. Okay, and this should give us a train data set based on all the images here. And we're going to take a randomly generated 20% of that and store it in our validation, which we can do right down here. Again, this time, validation data set. And this we just specify to be validation. So run that. And this. <coughs> just see. Okay, while well that's going, it should finish any second, but we can uh, set up the class names. A train, a data set has a value, an attribute called class names which will just be the names of the folders that it got data from. And so we'll store that in a class names variable for later use. And then we'll also get the number of classes. It will just be the length of class names. Makes sense. And, um, oh, what happened? Runtime disconnected.
looks like we got disconnected. That's okay, I'll just, as soon as we connect again, I will uh, rerun the whole thing. Uh, save and reload. Why don't we just start typing the next code while we're doing this? So, we're going to show another 9x9 grid, but this time it will take uh, different fruits and display their class names above. So, for we're going to take a we're going to use the train data set um, dot take. And that's what that's saying is it's going to take one batch. Remember, we divided it into 32 batches. So now we're going to take one of those batches and we're going to get every uh, we're going to get the set of images in that batch and the set of labels in that batch. And for each one we're going to create and remember this is only going to run one time since we're taking one batch but now we'll have uh, images and labels and then uh, with those images and labels that we got, we're going to construct another grid of pictures, a 3x3 three three grid of subplots, <coughs> like we did earlier, and we're going to use the image show. This time we'll, we won't open with pill, we'll just take this images right here, which uh, is already in an easier to use format, take the ith image, we'll convert it to a numpy array, and then we'll convert the type to an unsigned integer, 8-bit unsigned integer, and then we will change the title. Um, yes, one, one second. Oh, we have a problem saving. What's going on here? Oh, no, no. This is no good. Uh, it's okay. I have a I have a backup in case I need to just copy and paste it in. <coughs> but let's finish this block and then we'll try running it again. Okay. So um, the title will say is going to be the class name for that given fruit. Oh, looks like we saved successfully. <coughs> okay. Uh, can we try running this then? Just make sure we're on a GPU here. We'll use that later. And run all. Oh, this won't work yet. Actually, you might, but we don't want it to. So, we're going to take the ith label. Remember, we have a labels here that corresponds to the images. And if we take the ith label, and then we get the class name associated with that label, we should be able to... Um, get a, a grid, just turn the axis off as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, this is going to have to download again, yeah. Alright. So while that's going, I'll just keep, I mean, we, we should really should see what this looks like. But I we can come back to it, it's not a big deal. I mean this one. Oh yeah, and then plot.show we should do. Well, I guess we don't have to do that. <clears throat> Let's just do it anyway. Oh, what happened? Image width is not defined. Oh, I, t I spelled it out. What is wrong with me? <laughs> okay, here we go. So we get that. I guess this, this gave us some problems last time and it uh, messed up the runtime. Okay, but now it says we found all those files and we're using this many for training. Uh, here also. And we should be using the remaining validation. Looks good. So now we specify class names, number of classes, and we get a plot of different... Okay, let's just actually... Let's give it a better uh, figure size. 10 by 10 again. And you can see this is nine uh, examples each one with the corresponding class label. 
So now, um, why don't we just, okay, I, I guess we can just start setting up the model. <coughs> um, basically our input is going to be a 100 by 100 by 3 uh, array, uh, n-dimensional array, three-dimensional array. Um, and those are going to be batched into 32 batches. I mean, batches of size 32. And we're going to feed that into our model to get a single 32 uh, element vector of classifications for those fruits. So if we go ahead and just say, OK, this will be pre-processing now. It's not just setting up base model. So we're using transfer learning. And we'll use the ResNet model, which has been trained on the famous ImageNet dataset, uh, to get extraordinary results with while minimizing training time. So uh, we'll, we'll specify this parameter. I've used this before. Um, this value auto tune is basically TensorFlow's way of getting a value at runtime. So we specify this auto tune. Then when we when we uh, use auto tune. TensorFlow will automatically tune it to the right value for the situation. So we're going to um, cache our train data set and our validation data set. We're going to shuffle the train data set, and then we're going to prefetch the uh, both of them. Prefetching will allow us to uh, w work on processing data while other data examples are training. And caching, of course, will prevent us from having to uh, load the same images multiple times from the disk. So we'll cache, and we'll shuffle. We uh, just use thousand here, and we will prefetch with a buffer size. So this is a buffer size is basically um, where the size of the buffer that the data examples are being loaded into while um, the training is happening. Well, so that's going to be auto-tune. So it's going to figure that out at runtime. And then we'll do the same thing for validation, but we will not shuffle it, because there's no need to. It's flickering. Jeez. All right. Um, let's see. Let's run that. So that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's not run that. Notice I'm doing this to train dataset twice. This should be validation dataset. So I think let's go and uh, bring in train dataset again, and then run this again. What's happening here? This, uh, how do we stop the runtime? Interrupt execution. Okay. In any case, let's just keep coding. Um, basically, now we're going to set up our um, base model. So, base model is going to be the uh, ResNet model that's already been pre trained. Oh, we've, we were disconnected again. How great. <laughs> okay. Colab has some issues. Um, <coughs> so, tf.keras.applications.resnet and the model we'll be using is resnet 50 so this means 50 hidden layers which is extraordinary to train that would take so long so this is why we use a pre-trained model and the input shape is going to be image height image width by 3 because we have three color channels as well. And, uh, okay, great. Let's try that again. It'll take forever. <laughs> uh, we'll also specify um, that we do not want to include the um, fully connected layer at the top. 
And a lot of this um, I'm, I'm actually taking from TensorFlow's website, and I'm not entirely sure the intricacies of why we wouldn't include this. So uh, I will look into that and get back to you guys. But I'm not sure why we don't include the fully connected layer at the top of the ResNet model. If any of you know, please let me know in the comments below. And we'll also set the weights equal to the weights from training on ImageNet. All right. So we have our base model. And then we're actually, before we um, feed the data into our base model, we're going to create a data augmentation and pre-processing layer. Uh, two layers, data augmentation layer and pre-processing layer that will just allow us to feed it straight into ResNet. So our data augmentation layer is going to be uh, a sequential, actually it's, it's two layers here, but grouped into one sequential model. The first layer what? Okay. First layer will be tf.keras.layers experimental. This will be oh, pre-processing. This will be a random flip transformation. Horizontal flip. And the second transformation will apply to augment our data. It's going to be a random rotation. Okay, save failed. <laughs> what? Okay, we, we're having problems, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, so after, so now we have a data augmentation layer, it's, although it's two layers, and we're also going to have a data pre-processing layer. Reload. Fine. Okay, it loaded. It, it saved. I'm not even going to connect to the runtime yet. Just, just I'll wait till uh, we we might not have to anymore. Cause even we th we loaded these in. I'm not actually going to train it in this notebook. I have another notebook in which I trained it. I'll just show you the results from that. <coughs> but uh, so we're going to have a pre-process uh, input layer. This will just be a tf.keras.applications.resnet uh, pre-process input. So this is a layer that comes with the ResNet model that automatically will um, help us feed our input into uh, the ResNet model. So now we have this guy, this guy, and then the actual ResNet model. And then we're going to make sure that we set base model dot trainable to false. So this will uh, this is how transfer learning works. We'll have our pre-trained model which will not train and then our uh, uh, fully connected layer at the end that will train. And it will use that previous knowledge of images, general images, and apply it to our particular task of classifying fruits. And so we're only training the part of the model that learns fruits. Uh, and the, uh, the rest of the model is going to stay the way it is. <coughs> now, um, Let's see, okay. We are going to create one more thing after our base model. Two layers, actually. Well, one is our prediction layer, which is just going to be the fully connected layer at the end, our output layer, our classification layer, uh, which will just be a fully connected or dense layer with the number of classes as the output. It's pretty standard. And this will come at the very end. This we will train. And before that, we're going to use a global average layer. And I'm not entirely sure what this does. So uh, feel free to look it up if you want to know more. But it's, <coughs> I think it has something to do with the, uh, the way that ResNet transforms the feature uh, vectors for each example. Um, so we, it's global average pooling 2D. So with these, we can construct our final model, which is, we'll say, building the model. 
So we'll use the functional API for TensorFlow, which starts with the inputs, which will just be an input layer from Keras. And we specify the shape here as the shape of our images, which is 100 by 100 by 3. Then our next uh, layer will be the data, data augmentation layer that we created, which technically two layers, but that's fine. Because it's the functional API, it'll just go right through. And then next we will have our pre-processing, uh, the input, the pre-process -pre input layer, and we'll feed in X. Then we'll have our actual base model with parameters that are pre-trained. And we have to make sure that we set training to false on this. And this has something to do with the uh, uh, batch normalization layers that are inside uh, ResNet. You can look up more about that if you want. I'm not sure the, the intricacies of it. Um, and then we'll, after that we'll run it through our global average layer, which we created. And then lastly we will watch it one last step. We'll give it a dropout layer will randomly remove, uh, randomly select uh, parameters to not be trained during different iterations. And a dropout of 20%. And pass X through that. And then finally our outputs, which will just be the prediction layer we created. Okay. And our model will be tf.keras model, with our input specified, and our outputs specified. Alright. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to run it, but basically we're going to create the optimizer. We'll just be the uh, classic atom optimizer, but I'm going to use TensorFlow is recommended uh, learning rate for image classification, which is, or for uh, pre-trained model classification, which is 0 0.0001, a little lower than usual. And then we'll compile with our optimizer given, and a loss using a sparse categorical cross entropy. And we'll say from logits equals true. Notice because we don't have a we don't have an activation Raylu activation a uh, softmax activation on this, so we specify from logits is true. And then for our metrics, we include accuracy because that will be good in this situation. All right. Now uh, we will train the model. So um, to start, what I'd like to do is just evaluate the model on the validation set before we begin to show you that this model is very bad at classifying. And then after that, there's a reason I'm not uh, running this, we are just going to train the model and store it, store the results in history. So model.fit, uh, train dataset, epochs equals epochs, and the validation data will be our validation set. Okay, and I'm not really going to train this here, but I have the output here already that you can see from when I did it before. And uh, you can see when we first started, the accuracy was very poor. Also, we can just look at the summary here before we start. Uh, you can see there's tra untrained parameters here, right? Non-trainable parameters, 23 million parameters from the ResNet. And then this 268,000 parameters that are trainable that we created in our fully connected dense layer. So uh, now back to this. 
you can see we had an a, a classification accuracy of 0.6%, uh, which is it does it's not even <laughs> it doesn't do, doesn't do the job. But um, we very rapidly over 10 epochs got up to 98%, and you can see it was continuously going up. If we plot the loss, you can see that at the end uh, it was still going down. So in in practice, I would bring this up to maybe 20, 30 maybe more and then find the <coughs> the minimum and just set the final number of epochs to be that to get the best performance we can and you can see yeah so I mean here I, I plotted it you can see the train loss went down validation loss went down and it was not overfit I'm still just improving I only trained it for 10 epochs but even this you know this took like 15 20 minutes on a GPU so um, I think that's it for today. Uh, this is my first time doing uh, transfer learning uh, in TensorFlow, uh, and yeah, it's interesting. I, I realize that I don't know a lot of it. Um, this is very new to me, but I imp I hope to get better at it, and I'll m keep making better videos. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and leave any comments you have for suggestions, or just let me know how I'm doing in the comment section below. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow.